Wonder Trading, the feature that everybody loves. You trade away one of your worst Pokemon ever with someone across the world and hope you get one of the best Pokemon ever back. In reality though, this most of the time is not the case, because people send away their worst Pokemon 90% of the time as well. Earlier this year, Wonder Trading was added to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Of course, a feature that everybody would have loved at launch, but they just didn't add it in for some reason. I myself have have already conquered Pokemon Sword and Shield with a Wonderlock and this time we're bringing it back but in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. For the people that don't know what a Wonderlock is, basically you can capture one Pokemon every single route and then trade that Pokemon away for something different. But if we get a Pokemon that we've already received, we can trade that away again to get a new encounter. Besides that, all of the other hardcore Nuzlocke rules will be applied in this video too, which I will put up on the screen right now. Let's try to go crazy and smash 7500 likes. And with everything out of the way, let's trade ourselves up to the champion. We get greeted by Professor Rowan and his little brother. We pick our name, which is going to be Koga, because when I first started this run, I was going to do a hardcore Nuzlocke with poison types. But then I thought by myself, whoa, Wonder Trading is now available, so let's do that instead. And we give our rival the only name that's possible for him, Barry. We watch this weird commercial on TV, we go downstairs to see our chibi mom, and then we also change around our settings and pick the best text window there is. We get violently attacked by our neighbor and interrupt Professor Rowan and Dawn's date. We then get attacked by some birds and instead of using the briefcase as a weapon, we decide to open it up and fight bird with bird. We then stumble upon Professor Rowan again, he doesn't really seem to care that we stole his Pokemon, and he even invites us back to his house, where we give our little penguin a new name, and Dawn then also kidnaps us because she wants to show us for the millionth time how to capture a Pokemon. As her apprentice, we turn into the master ourselves really quickly, but we haven't acquired enough knowledge yet, so we go to the Wanshitong library to deliver the parcel to Barry, we get the town map in return, then we prove once again that we're the smartest man on earth by answering these three questions, and as a reward we get the newest Apple Watch. Since Wonder Trading doesn't unlock until you have received your first ever gym badge, we're going to have to beat up our rival really quickly, scour the routes for even more Pokemon and also grab the old rod which will give us access to some encounters later on which are otherwise not available. This chubby man wanted to smash my rocks, which I wasn't too excited about, so we ran off really quickly and grabbed ourselves a stone with a face. Once that was done, we went to the mines where we find Rourke, the gym leader of Orberg City. We eventually convince him to stop breaking rocks and take my gym challenge since that's his job. And this gym is also the reason why I chose Pingu, because it's the only gym we really have to beat. And with Piplup's water attacks, this was super easy without any problems. We sweep through all of them and grabbed our first gym badge, unlocking Wonder Trading for us. So we walk all the way back to Jubilee City and go to the Wonder Trading Station. This is also the only way you can Wonder Trade, like you can't just access it from the menu. Every time you want to send your Pokemon away on a journey, you have to track back all the way over here, which I do think is a very stupid idea. Anyway, once we're inside, we do our first Wonder Trade and we say goodbye to our starter. And it seems like we just traded with Rourke because we get a crazy dose in return. We also get some other very important team members like Zubat, Wooper. But this Wooper is not just a regular Wooper, it's a Recover and Curse Wooper, so it can always heal itself up and set up, which is something you love to see. We also get a couple more Pokemon, and eventually we marked 5 points on the map. So how do you get these points? Well, every time you trade with a person across the world, you cross off a country. And per country you cross off, you get a point. And then once you reach 5 or 10 or 50 or 100 points, you get more and more rewards. These rewards only consist of rare candies, but they are very useful at the end of the game and going to save us a bunch of grinding, since we'll be wonder trading quite a lot more. As you can see right here, we grab ourselves a Shellos, a Budu, a Ditto, a Starly, and eventually reach 10 points, giving us even more rare candies. 
We also get a Staravia, which I swapped out for my Starly, because if I can choose between those two, I will rather have the evolution. And as you can see from our boxes, this is what we're working with after our first bunch of wonder trades. Time to move on through the story. We help out the professor and his girlfriend by defeating the guys with the worst haircuts ever. And as I was leveling up my Pokemon, I ran into another issue. If you only have one gym badge in this game, Pokemon will only obey you up to level 10. So once they reach level 11, they will start to fall asleep, ignore your commands, hit themselves in their confusion even if they're not confused, and just borderline be absolutely useless. Which means we can't really start the hardcore Nuzlocke yet, because the next fight we had to do against Mars took me over 40 attempts to beat. My Pokemon were either too low level and I didn't want to level them up because then they would not listen to me anymore, or the Pokemon that were already past level 10 would just keep loafing around or falling asleep so that Mars could get some easy kills on me. After over two hours of attempting the same battle, we eventually managed to beat Mars. Which was only possible because it was using Growl on my Gibble while it normally never uses Growl. And I could just Rock Smash it to lower its defense so that my Kratidos could ultimately come in and take it out with a single headbutt. That means that we're done saving the stinky old man that's working here. Which means we can head on over to the forest to fight together with Cheryl. But our troubles are far from done because every single trainer here took multiple tries to defeat because we still don't have our second gym badge so our Pokemon still don't listen. Luckily she has one of the most useless Pokemon ever, Chansey, who barely does any damage. After another hour or so we finally make it out of the forest. I meet up with everyone's favorite champion, Cynthia. Except for mine, because I like Steven more. I honestly just hope that she's going to demolish Ash, because there's no way Ash could actually beat her with skill. We also take a look at Pokemon's first ever fusion, this statue of Dialga and Palkia. And how cool would it be if they would actually release a Pokemon like this? And then I also finally put my old rod to use by fishing in the town itself. I grab a couple more encounters and head straight to the gym leader who normally should be a piece of cake since we have a Zubat on the team, but just like your little brother who doesn't listen to you and you say something to him, this Zubat also doesn't listen to me, just like my Staravia. And if you thought that the Mars battle took me a long time, this one took me about 20 attempts more than the Mars battle. I was actually driving myself crazy by dying, and then dying again, and again, and again, and again. Until eventually, Zubat decided to put in some work by taking out Cherubi and Turtwig with its poison fangs. Which is something that had never happened before, because by the time Turtwig went out, Zubat would not listen to me and just die. Rose Raid is then going to be able to take out my Zubat, I bring in Geodude which is always going to be able to tank a single hit with its sturdy. So I try to do a little bit of chip damage with Smackdown but that of course didn't work because he didn't listen to me. Staravia then came out and was able to hit two wing attacks in a row, destroying the Rose Raid and finally giving me my second gym badge so that all of my Pokemon will listen to me from now on. So now the Hardcore Nuzlocke starts. Now that we have access to our full power, we can beat the living hell out of Jupiter with Quaxar's curses and then just going for a slam on Zubat and Skunk Tank to take both of them out, saving this entire town, which means that we can now grab ourselves the Explorer Kit to go underground, but we're not going to do much underground yet except for capture a Swablu and that's going to be our underground encounter. We do our first evolution, Hoot Hoot into Noctowl, then we flex with our new blue bike and meet up with Dawn to grab the Versus Seeker, which could come in handy if we want to grind, but since we're going to have those rare candies, I don't think we're going to use it very much. We are pretty close to the trading station, so we grab ourselves a Bidoof and an actual good Pokemon, Trico, which is going to be our starter from now on. We also get a really cool Graveler, which evolves into a Golem. And if you're just doing a regular playthrough, you can't really get Golem, so it was pretty nice to have this. But we can't even use it because its level is just way too high right now. We also get the 30 point mark done and get some more useful Pokemon like Houndoom and Shinx. I'll also show you my box to see what we have right now. And see that little Magikarp over there? That could also become one of our most useful Pokemon. But before we unleash its potential, we go to Mount Coronet to see Cyrus. And I would actually love to know what your favorite evil team leaders are, since I feel like almost everybody has a different 
favorite evil team leader. My personal favorite is actually Archie, but not the regular Archie, the one that they remade in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Not because of his beliefs, but because of his glow up. Like, he just became the most badass character Pokemon has ever seen. And he also has the coolest Mega Stone and outfit out of any character in any Pokemon game. Anyway, we move on with our journey and get attacked by a crazy rabbit in Heart Home City. We see the ghost type gym leader, Fontina, but we're not going to be able to challenge her until we have four gym badges, which I think is very stupid because that means we have to do some backtracking. In my opinion, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl just weren't the best games out there. I don't really understand why they remade these games with all of these features and not just went with the platinum features and then built those up even more to create a new version of Diamond and Pearl. We then finally go inside, meet up with our mother who gives us a free tuxedo. So now we can go on very expensive dates, even though we're broke AF. As we then try to leave Heart Home City, we get stopped by Barry once again. But his team took the first train to Pain Town. Because my Noctowl's Air Slashes could one-shot every single one of his Pokemon Starly, Buizel, Ponyta, and lastly Grottle, grabbing ourselves an easy victory. And once the battle was done, my Trico immediately evolved into Groval, which was nice. We then skipped through the next couple of routes and beat these two Ace Trainers, which are, at this point in the game, very hard to beat since one of them has a Gyarados. And I know lots of Pokemon have died to this thing. All of a sudden, we find ourselves in the department store where we find a bunch of TMs which are going to be very useful to us throughout this entire playthrough. We try to convince Dawn that she should stop dating Rowan, but she storms off very angry, so we gotta hit the gym. We move these wooden pallets with our amazing strength and eventually reach the gym leader, Mei Lin. But you might have already realized that our team is full of flying types and things that are actually good against the fighting type. So this gym really wasn't too hard for me to get through. First off, we send out Noctowl against her Meditite, which we easily take out with two Air Slashes. Then we miss a couple of Air Slashes on the next Pokemon, Machoke, but we manage to get it down to half health before we have to swap out Noctowl because otherwise it's going to take us out. I bring in Quagsire, tank a bunch of hits because I'm able to set up some curses, and then I just spam recover to get my HP back. Eventually we take out this Machoke, with an Aqua Tail, then her Lucario comes out, but he can't really do much damage to me since he only has physical attacks. So we once again counter back with an Aqua Tail and win our third Gym Badge. Then we get one of the best team members ever, our Magikarp evolves into a Gyarados, which is probably one of the most useful Pokemon in any given Hardcore Nuzlocke just because of its ability Intimidate. And of course, it's amazing stats as well. Shortly after, we also evolve our Shinx into Luxio, because he is going to be the next gym leader's biggest nightmare, since Crasher Wake is going to be using a bunch of water types. Me and Dawn decide to be friends again after I helped her get her Pokedex back from this weird cult. We then grab a couple more encounters, defeat every trainer in our path, and our Gibble also evolves into a Gabite, but I won't be using it for very long. Even though Garchomp is an amazing Pokemon, I have already thoroughly used Garchomp in my hardcore Nuzlocke of this game with only ground types. So if you want to see some Garchomp action, I highly recommend checking out that video. We then go swimming in the fourth gym leader's house. Crusher Wake, probably the best gym leader design in the first four generations. I absolutely love him. But let's see if I still love him after this battle's done. I actually added Pachirisu to the team to take out his first Pokemon Gyarados, but Electro Ball didn't do enough damage and just as I'm about to take him out with another one, he swaps out into Quagsire to totally negate my attack. I then bring in every Water Ground type, biggest nightmare, Grovile, and just go for the Giga Drain and that is that, Quagsire is no more. Gyarados comes back out, this time I go into Luxio and Spark it to take it out, but it was also able to hit two crunches on me, bringing me down into red HP, so I have to swap out once he brings in Floatzel. I bring in Gyarados to lower its attack with my Intimidate, since it only has physical moves, except for Brine, which it's not going to use. It's barely doing any damage to me, and we can just crunch it to death, which earns us our fourth Gym Badge. In this game, they don't have enough time to blow up the Safari Zone, which is, I guess, a good thing. But it also means that you just have to follow this goon around, without actually knowing what he's going to do. Of course, while you're chasing him, your rival comes up to you and is like, Nope, I'm going to interrupt your good deeds by challenging you to a Pokemon battle with useless Pokemon. 
And with useless, I mean really useless, because he has a level 26 Starly. Just doesn't make any sense in my opinion. He hasn't changed his team up since the last battle, so Luxio can spark through the first three Pokemon, and Golbat can take out his ace Pokemon Grottle with some air cutters. Straight after the battle, our Luxio evolves into Luxray. We keep traveling to the lakefront where we meet up with Cynthia, who gives us the secret potion. But before we go and use that, it's time to do some extra wonder trades. First, I get myself a trap inch, which I was really happy about until I saw that it was level 58, which means I can't use it until the league, where it wouldn't be as useful. Then we get a Clefairy, and I thought this will probably be my Garchomp killer. So I'm definitely keeping this one around. We also get a Munchlax, which we can evolve into Snorlax later on to turn into our specially defensive tank. And then we also got some filler Pokemon who I rarely used. We then spray the Psyduck away with the secret potion, which I think honestly is just a repel. And then we get the old charm, which we have to go and deliver to the old hag. But first we have to go through the worst route in Pokemon's history, the foggy route. And I totally forgot where to pick up Defog and I couldn't be bothered to look it up, so I went in blindly. Since I've played this game about a billion times already, I knew the way from the top of my head, even though you legit can't see anything. Once we reach Celestic Town, we get the HM for Surf, once we talk to this wall, and then we see Cyrus, I was expecting a battle here, but totally forgot this battle is only in Platinum. So he just lets us go with a warning. I then pick up my first useful item, the Wise Glasses, and finally backtrack to Heart Home City to beat up Fontina, and I went to do this fight without saving or without healing up. As you can see from my Houndoom's poison status, and it only having about half of its HP which meant I immediately swapped out into Luxray, went for the Volt Switch, and then almost killed it. Going into Crobat afterwards and going for the Bite, but this was not enough to kill the Drifblim because it used Will-O-Wisp to cripple my attack. Then I swapped out into Gyarados, who hit a couple more crunches, but also got burned, and that's Drifblim down. I could have easily avoided all of these burns if I just had my Houndoom at full health and if he wasn't poisoned. Eventually she brought in Gengar, so I swapped out into Quagsire since my Gyarados is not going to be able to do anything anymore. I was easily able to stall out this Gengar with recovers, and then in between recovers I would just hit an Aqua Tail. Of course she was healing up with Hyper Potions in between too, but in the end I was able to win the stall battle and Aqua Tail the Gengar back to the grave. Her last Pokemon was Miss Magius, I didn't want to lose Quagsire to a Magical Leaf, so I swapped into Luxray and bit it two times in a row, winning me my fifth gym badge. Shortly after, we talk to our girl Cynthia again, who tells me to go to Candlelay City to try and challenge the next gym leader, Byron, who is also Rourke's father. But before we do that, we have to pay some toll on the bridge by defeating our rival. He finally did something smart by evolving his Starly into his Staravia, but as I try to go for Flamethrower with Hound Doom, he swaps it out for Ponyta, who is going to absorb it with Flash Fire. Then I bring in Gabite, who is able to hit a couple of bulldozers and make the Ponyta go bye-bye. I did not bring a flying type for the next Pokemon Heracross, so I swapped in Quagsire, go for a curse, then killed it with two Aqua Tails. Quagsire also almost died to Brick Breaks, so I have to swap it out because Grottle is going to be able to one-shot me otherwise. I go into Houndoom, Flamethrower twice, and burn it to a crisp. The last two Pokemon, Weasel and Staravia, are both weak to electric types, so my Lux Rays Spark dealt with both of them. This allows us to go straight to Byron, who of course has a team full of Steel types. Starting out with a Bronzor, which is going to be very easy to beat with Hamdoom's beat up. It was able to set up a Sandstorm, which is not really going to work in our favor, but I know that his next Pokemon will be Steelix, and it's also going to go for Earthquake, so I swap in Gyarados to totally negate that. Then I try to go for Aqua Tail, but I miss, and the Steelix goes for Thunder Fang, which almost one-shots my Gyarados. I had no idea this Steelix had Thunder Fang, so I decided to swap out into Quagsire after this. He took out the Steelix with two more Aqua Tails, while also taking an Earthquake pretty damn well. His last Pokemon will be his Bastiodon, which is definitely not as cool as Rampardos, as you can see from my Quagsire, who is able to destroy it with just a couple of Aqua Tails again. It's also not really able to hit me very hard because it's only using Flash Cannon, so that's another easy gym batch added to the total. Disasters are happening across the regions as Team Galactic is bombing some lakes. 
At least, that's what this sailor guy tells us. Don't know if we should believe him, so let's go check it out ourselves. But first, we have to do some way more important things. Namely, hitting 50 successful marked points. And then wonder trading some more until we get a fee bass. And I really, really wanted to use it in my loading. So I did something that I hadn't done since I was like 12 years old. Baking some poffins. I actually totally forgot this was a feature in the game, but since I'm the best chef out there, we only make the best poffins. Feebas needs beauty points, which you can only get if you bake blue poffins. So I bought every single chesto berry from this lady here and decided to cook them all up. Once I was done, I fit them all to my Feebas just to realize that this was not enough because you need to actually use other berries than chesto berries to get more evolved cakes. Which means this Feebas is never going to be able to evolve into a Milotic. So I just wasted like an hour of my life baking for nothing. But you know what they always say, no Feebas, no problem. We go straight to the next lake and take on Saturn there. As usual, his team was a total pushover, but we're already too late since they've already brought Azelf to their headquarters. So we go to our hometown instead and go check out that lake, which is also already taken over by Mars this time. This time we didn't have to do two hours of attempts, just one was enough. But of course her operation has already captured Mesprit, so we're too late for these lakes. Let's hope Barry has a little bit of a better time in the snow. I totally forgot that you had to get strength from this lady in the spooky tower. And if you don't look it up, you basically have no idea where to get the strength each time, so you can't progress. But it's time to put on your winter clothes because we're going skiing. And while we're in the snow, we also grab some extra encounters as well as the HM for rock climb, which is still behind this little cabin here. Shortly after, my Cranidos evolves into a Rampardos. Not that it really matters, but I just love Rampardos, so I wanted to show it off. After almost freezing to death, we take shelter in the closest by building, which was Candace's gym, which is also cold. But we decided to heat it up with our Hound Doom. Which is actually the best choice for her first Pokemon Snover because a flamethrower is absolutely going to scorch that thing. I also tried to take down Sneasel with flamethrower but that didn't really worry because it outsped me and went for a dig. So I swapped out into Gyarados instead who could still just take out the Sneasel with a single waterfall. Medicham then gave me the scare of a lifetime. I think I just became 20 years older because it went for Rock Slide, left me with 8 HP and I thought that the hail was going to finish me off but Gyarados somehow survived with 1 HP. So I went into Quagsire the turn after, took a rock slide, it decided to heal up. I went for two more Aqua Tails and that's Medicham down. Her last Pokemon is of course going to be her Abama Snow, so I go back into my Hound Doom, flamethrower it once and burn the big abominable snowman. Seven gym badges acquired, only one more to go, but first we have to go through a bunch of story. Since Barry doesn't evolve his Pokemon, he lost to Jupiter at the lake, so they managed to capture Yuxi as well. We then go back to do some extra wonder trading, and I managed to get myself a Machamp. He was even at an appropriate level so that I could use him, so I decided to swap him out for the Machoke that I already had. We confront this Team Galactic member and punch the work ski out of him. Also finally evolve our Grovile into a Sceptile. In the basement of the Team Galactic headquarters we find a Galactic Key. And they also didn't add in the best thing of Pokemon Platinum, Cyrus's speech. So we just have to go and walk up to his office, knock on his door and beat his ass. But he has one of the worst teams an evil leader has ever seen. So Luxray can easily take care of Murkrow and Golbat. And it's also time for Machamp to get his first kill on his last Pokemon, Sneasel. As a reward for defeating the worst team in the entire game, Cyrus decides to give me a Master Ball. Saturn got destroyed by Hound Doom's flamethrowers and beat up, so that was easy too. And then we free our three psychic friends with a click of a button. We then reach the top of the spare pillar where Cyrus is obviously constructing his master plan. He's found Dialga, put a red chain on him, and he's trying to make the world more colorful, it seems like. But we don't want him to change the hue and saturation around here. So we decide to go in and try to take him down. But first we get stopped by his two admins. Luckily we have Barry on our side to help us take both of these characters down. And despite my rival here having a level 42 Buizel, I'm sorry Game Freak, but why? We still managed to overpower the duo with the strength of our Gyarados. 
Just as Dialga is about to create the perfect new world, our three lay guardians come in and save the day. That's right, we didn't even save the day, they did. Although we did rescue them, so I suppose we did kinda save the day. But Cyrus isn't done with us yet, as he attacks me with his newly buffed up team. He starts out with a hunch quill, but I countered that by bringing out my Luxray. I easily take it out with just a single volt switch, but this causes me to swap out into Gyarados as he also brings in his own Gyarados. Somehow I don't win this matchup and I have to swap out before my own Gyarados goes down here. I bring in Luxray again and this time a Spark can just one-shot it. He then swaps out into a Weavile, which is pretty hard for me to deal with if I didn't have Machamp. It still did major damage with a Diggin and Aerial Ace, but we managed to survive and hit back with a Vital Throw to obliterate this amazing Pokemon. His last Pokemon was a Crobat, and I could have just swapped into Luxray here, but I decided to give Quagsire some time to shine again. So he chipped in with some Aqua Tails, killed the Crobat pretty easily, and defeated Cyrus. I then also challenged Dialga and I could have just tried to take him down but I wanted to capture him with a Master Ball to then trade him away and give someone a free Dialga. Only to realize that when I tried to trade away this Dialga it didn't happen because the game doesn't let you. So instead I went to Sunny Shore City, the city with the best soundtrack in this game and met up with our favorite hothead Flint. He tells me to go and cheer up Volkner because he's being a bad gym leader by not enjoying any battles. So we go to the top of the lighthouse to confront him and call him out for it. Once he heads back to his gym, we grab a couple more encounters and trade them away to grab a Larvitar, an Absol and even a level 100 Haunter. Which of course evolves into a Gengar. This does also remind me of that girl that trades you a Haunter and you think you're going to get a Gengar but she has put an Everstone on it so it doesn't evolve. Yeah, that girl is pure evil. Once we're done doing our last couple of trades, we go to the final gym leader, Volkner, and take him down. He starts out with a Raichu, so I lead off with Quagsire. I set up a bunch of curses because this Raichu has nothing to hit me with, and then I just one-shot it with an Aqua Tail. The next three Pokemon are Ambipom, Octillery, and Luxray, and none of them could do enough damage to even get my Quagsire under half health. So I aqua tailed every single one of them and won my 8th gym badge in style. We biked our way through Victory Road, but we also got stuck a couple of times because the bike mechanics in this game kinda suck. And eventually we take the big waterfall up to the Pokemon League and just as we're about to go in, we get stopped by Barry. First off is his Staraptor. Finally, he evolved it. And I bring in my Gyarados with a new move, Thunderbolt. I bet he didn't expect that because he set up a sunny day for some reason and we managed to two-shot it with Thunderbolts. He swaps out into Heracross the turn after, I bring in Crobat, he goes for a Sword Stance, I outspeed with Fly and just one-shot it again. For his Float Soul, I went into my Sceptile to finally give him a Spotlight moment because he's not been used too much. I do tank an Ice Fang pretty well with over half of my HP left, then I hit a Giga Drain, one-shotting the Float Soul once again. For Rapid Ash, I once again swapped in Gyarados, and because of the Intimidate, it's also going to do less damage to me, we Waterfall it again, we extinguish its flame, and then he brings out his Torterra. This Torterra was actually not too easy to beat because it started off by setting up Stealth Rocks as I bring in my Sceptile. I then do about half of its health and damage with Giga Drains before I have to swap out into Crobat, since Sceptile is also almost down. Crobat can then one-shot with Fly, which is pretty good, but we've already taken extensive damage from the Stealth Rocks. So I go into Gyarados, which was actually a very risky move because the Stealth Rocks were up, but I really wanted to get an Intimidate off on this thing. Luckily, it just went for Yawn, which didn't do any damage, so I could swap out immediately after into Quagsire, who got put to sleep with a Yawn and almost died to a bunch of Body Slams, but eventually we did burn through that and Earthquake the Snorlax, to finally take out Barry, and to be completely honest with you, this was the hardest battle up until this point. Now before we take on the Pokemon League, we have to do a couple more things. First, I wonder trade up until I get 100 points marked. I'm not going to use these Pokemon, but I just wanted the rare candies that I get from that reward to easily grind up my entire team. This process only took me about half an hour because the wonder trades were really fast. And if I trained for like half an hour, my Pokemon would only gain like 5 levels. Then I went back to Mount Coronet, used Thief with my Crobat a bunch on Clefairies until I managed to snag a Moonstone off of one of them. 
I then used this Moonstone to evolve my own Clefairy into Clefable. Then I went to this lady to give my Munchlax a massage so it could easily evolve into Snorlax after. And then I used all of my rare candies to level my entire team up to level 63. And the team I'll be going into the league with will be Snorlax, Gyarados, Crobat, Quagsire, Clefable, and Sceptile. Let's get right into it by challenging Aeron. He was by far the easiest out of all of the Elite Four members to beat because Crobat could just one-shot Beautifly, Dustox, Heracross, and Vespiquen with flies. Then he brings out Drapion. So I swept out my Quagsire who immediately gets hit with a Night Slash. Critical hit, but I decide to stay in, but the Drapion gets another critical hit, leaving him with only 4 HP. That was actually super lucky because now we can just Earthquake, Drapion, take it out. But if we would have lost Quagsire here, the run might have actually been over. The next trainer we have to beat is Bertha, and this is the reason why I brought Sceptile. He took every single one of her Pokémon down with Giga Drain's easy peasy. Some of them survived because of their berries or their sturdy ability, but they couldn't do enough damage to one-shot my Sceptile, and I would just always get my HP back with Giga Drain anyway. Bertha down. Time to challenge Flint. The road to win the battle against Flint was very bumpy, because he started out with a Rapidash and put my Gyarados to sleep. He was able to bring me all the way down to 58 HP until I finally woke up and managed to one-shot it with Waterfall. For Steelix, I swapped out into Quagsire because I knew this thing was going to go for Thunderfang. I then proceeded to set up two Curses and heal myself up with Recover before I took it out with another Earthquake. Low Pony went down the same way, just a single Earthquake, but then he brought out his Drifblim. One of the most annoying Pokémon in the league because of its Minimize and Baton Pass. Not only that, it can cripple your attack with Will-O-Wisp, which makes this Pokémon an all-around pain to deal with. So I decided to go into Crobat and just hit a couple of Thieves on it, but this was not enough since it burned me. Then I brought in Gyarados, and just as I'm about to hit a Crunch, he Baton Passes into his last Pokémon Infernape. So I swap out Gyarados for Quagsire, Earthquake Infernape, and that's that done. Only Drifblim to go. I swap back out into Gyarados to hit a couple of Thunderbolts, but we get burned again and it starts setting up its minimizes, so I just miss almost all of my attacks. Just before my Gyarados goes down, I bring in Clefable, who doesn't really use physical attacks all that much, so I go for a bunch of Moonblasts. I actually had to click the Moonblast button 11 times before I finally took down this Drifblim. And that's the most annoying fight of the Elite Four over. Let's see what Will has in store for us. He starts out with a Mr. Mime, and I'll be leading off with my Gyarados. I first set up two Dragon Dances, and he sets up a Light Screen and a Reflect. Then I hit a Waterfall to almost take down Mr. Mime, but this causes him to heal up so I can set up a free Dragon Dance again. Now that I'm at plus 3, I can one-shot this Mr. Mime, and the rest of his Pokémon all got one-shotted by Gyarados' crunches, because a plus 3 Gyarados is just going to sweep through your team, no matter what you do. Now it's time for the battle that everybody's been waiting for. Cynthia's most powerful team. Let's see if we can beat it. She of course starts out with her Menacing Spirit Tomb, so my Clefable is trying to take it out with Moonblast, I managed to hit one, and just as I'm about to take it out with my second one, she swaps out into Rose Raid. So I bring in Crobat who can easily tank any hit from this, hit back with a fly, take down Rose Raid, and Spirit Tomb is out again. I bring in Clefable again, heal up with Moonlight, and take it out with Moonblast. Gastrodon is coming out because it has access to Sludge Bomb, so I bring out Crobat, because I thought it was easily just going to go for that Sludge Bomb no matter what, but it actually went for Rock Tomb, which was not amazing. This did activate my Citrus Berry, which let me gain some HP back, but then I swap out into Quagsire to try and pivot around a Rock Tomb so I could bring in Sceptile without getting a Speed Lowering. That's not what happens, my Sceptile still gets the Speed Lowering, and I take out Gastrodon with a couple of Giga Drains. Her Majestic Snake, Milotic, then comes in, and I bring in Quagsire again because it can only hit me with Ice Beam, which is not going to do that much damage, so I can set up six curses on it. It even manages to freeze me with its Ice Beam, but because of my friendship, I just thaw out immediately. Heal myself up or recover, and kill this Milotic with Earthquake, just like the next Pokémon who didn't stand a chance, Lucario. The last Pokémon she uses is one we're very familiar with, her Ace Garchomp. It's of course able to outspeed me and hit me with an Earthquake, it barely does anything anymore because of my curses, we counter back with our own Earthquake, and that's Garchomp down. We defeated Cynthia, 
and became champion of the Sinnoh region with only wonder traded Pokemon. I want to give a huge shout out to everybody in this video who decided to send me their Pokemon because without everybody's help we could not have done this and this Quagsire was honestly the savior of this run. If I didn't have this boy, I don't know how I would have beaten Garchomp. I actually brought Snorlax with me as my specially defensive tank but I didn't even have to use him. So I definitely think I made a good team comp here. Anyway, I just want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It's always appreciated but not needed. And with all of that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo and I'll see you guys next time.